Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we normally look at the episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, however, we're doing an overview of the entire season of Power Rangers Turbo and what worked, what didn't, what could have been done differently. First and foremost, if you haven't watched any of these episodes before, there are 45 videos before this one going into minute detail about how each individual episode making up this season went. They're all linked in the playlist above. We begin this season very differently from others, with a future film. Long story short, the Rangers need to stop an evil space pirate named Deep Tox from getting a source of insane power as she's torturing a family of magical ferrets. Also, Rocky broke his back being a douche, so now we replace him with a 12-year-old kid. Imagine the pitch meeting for this film. The Rangers get new powers and new zords for no apparent reason whatsoever, and they are now the Power Rangers team. Everyone is the same color except the new Blue Ranger is named Justin. The series starts off with a ton of filler episodes, letting us know that Deep Talks likes setting up detonators with insane amounts of time attached, and also Zora and Alpha 5 leave to go back to Eltar. Introducing their replacements, Demetria from the planet Inquirus, who literally only asks questions because she's terrible, and Alpha 6, a visually similar robot who speaks with a faux New York accent. Oh, and also Stone now owns the juice bar and runs it, and Bulk and Skull are now monkeys for half the season. Yeah, it's like they were trying to tank the show. In an episode called Transmission Impossible, we meet a friend of Demetria's named Visceron, who is attempting to come to Earth to tell her that she actually has a long-lost sister. Also, in a lot of the other episodes, we see that there's this weird parent-slash-child relationship between Justin and the other Rangers. Mostly Cat, but it's there with the others too, who have now become like superhero big brothers and big sisters. It's awkward. We're introduced to a new ally in the episode, The Millennium Message, the Blue Centaurian. He comes from the future to deliver a message to the Power Rangers. Deep Talk sees it and is essentially showing that the Power Rangers' enemies will come together, join forces, and conquer the Earth, but they need to stand together to win. Deep Talk sees the end of the message with who the Power Rangers are, but by the time the Rangers see it, the ending is actually missing from a previous battle. For whatever reason, the Blue Centaurian doesn't go back to the future, and he sticks around for the rest of the season, albeit sporadically. Pretty much nothing of absolute importance happens until a drive to win where we're introduced to two new characters, Carlos and Ashley. Also, Cars Attacks introduces Jenny, Stone's niece, who is a total bitch, but she bonds with Kat. Kind of. In the mid-season two-parter, Passing the Torch, we're introduced to another two characters, TJ and Cassie, who help save Tommy from Divatox's most recent evil plan to remove the leader. This turns into a really terrible, oh, this thing is happening, where all of a sudden, literally every ranger except for Justin steps down in a matter of five minutes, giving the powers to someone else. TJ is now the Red Ranger, Cassie the Pink Ranger, Ashley the Yellow Ranger, and Carlos the Green Ranger, aka how Turbo should have been from the get-go. We then just move on from this, pretending like we've been this way from the start, and I will say these rangers aren't great at fighting at first out of suit at, like, at all until much later in the season, which is a nice progression to follow. Though it's hard to tell if this was intentional or the actors were just getting more skilled. TJ and Justin then get new auxiliary cars, known as Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster. They are sentient cars and Divatox is so jealous that she actually builds her own car that fails, but we see it quite a few times throughout the rest of the show. After they get baked into a giant pizza, Seriously. The new mysterious ranger known as the Phantom Ranger shows up. Cassie wants to boink him on sight alone, even though half the time this dude is invisible. They then get their Turbo Megazord taken by Divatox, who's piloting the first of her many Zords, Metallosaurus, which comes from her brother Havoc, who has stopped by with a gift. From this, the Phantom Ranger introduces the Rescue Zords, which come together to form the Rescue Megazord. This is their second Megazord for the season, and they use it quite a lot from here on out. Then Havoc uses a plan to steal the Phantom Ranger's Power Ruby in his chest, only for the Rangers to get it back. And they also get back their Turbo Megazord. Everything is A-OK -okay and Phantom Ranger pieces out forever. Also, we have a ton of storylines going on throughout the season about Justin's dad, who is there one minute and most of the time just gone. He's apparently constantly looking for work and who knows who takes care of Justin in the meantime because we learned in the movie that his mom is not around. After a string of filler episodes, and some of these we actually get to see Divatox's three new Zords, the Cat Zord, the Shark Zord, and the Diva Zord. They're all pretty easily defeated by the Rangers, which is kind of lackluster overall. I mean, the final battle is against all three who have been rebuilt from parts from Divatox who is stealing packages on Earth. In the finale, Divatox actually wins by sending down a monster named Goldgoyle, which the Rangers must sacrifice their two Megazords and their weapons to before they find out where the power chamber is. They attack it from the inside out and the Rangers lose their power. Demetria and Alpha have already left for Eltar, which has fallen under attack, and they're trying to save Zordon who is actually captured, we learn. Divatox leaves for the Sumerian planet under the direction of someone named Dark Spectre, and the Rangers borrow a space shuttle from NASADA, aka the Power Rangers version of NASA, but Justin stays behind on Earth because he wants to stay with his dad. We end the season with a space shuttle going up into the sky. Okay, let's go character by character here. Tommy's barely in the show during the 19 episodes that he's actually in the opening sequence, making it very apparent that JDF was checked out at that point. Cat becomes very motherly towards Justin, which comes off as creepy most times because they're supposed to be teammates. Tanya and Adam feel like they're full-on dating now, and the fact that we lost them halfway through the season just because is a real shame. 
So that leaves Justin, who comes across as the whining, annoying little brother for most of the first half of the season. There's like nothing good with this first cast that was done except maybe Adam and Tanya. Second cast is way better. TJ is a bit generic, but he likes baseball and doing the right thing. Carlos is a bit of a shithead in the beginning, totally unable to not be an attention hog in soccer, but he gets better throughout the season. Cassie is a sassy singer who is very direct with people, and she's probably one of the best characters. Ashley is very into fashion and all things girly. Justin turns into like a normal person. Not whiny, not complaining about how no one believes him, not a liability, and even gets a friend his own age. Everything switches in Turbo from the first half to the second half because they cleaned house with the writing staff, which explains why a lot of things are completely changed in Turbo. Demetria no longer only speaks in questions halfway throughout the show, now basically acting as Zordon. Diotox's missing sister thing never comes up again, though it's apparent it was supposed to be Demetria since the two were played by the same actress for most of the season. The Millennium message never comes up again, and it's probably because, well, they didn't even make everyone a ranger that they were expecting to. There's a reason why Diotox actually starts targeting very specific spots after that episode with her detonators. She's trying to kill the future rangers that she saw in the Millennium message, aka Carlos, Ashley, and Stone's niece, Jenny. Jenny was originally intended to become the new pink ranger, but the new staff introduced Cassie and TJ instead. Apparently TJ would have been a guy named Mike Michael, who was an intern at the radio station with Tanya. I also realized I forgot to mention, Turbo started out with all the Rangers graduating high school. You think you're going in for a more mature, different feeling show when that happens, but then they turn Justin into a boy genius who tests into high school while the others have jobs or like expensive hobbies like how Tommy loves race cars now for some god awful reason. So what worked in Turbo? Honestly, pretty much just the second half, and even then, it had its moments of being pretty terrible or awkward because the writers clearly still struggled with the weird Japanese footage that they were using. But overall, it's way better written and just a lot more enjoyable to watch. The chemistry between TJ, Carlos, Justin, Ashley, and Cassie just works way better than shoehorning Justin in with the veterans. They treat him as an equal as opposed to a child, and it makes a big difference in the show overall. Demetria also works pretty well as a Zordon substitute after they stop making her ask so many goddamn questions, but even then she doesn't do anything special. Would have been nice to see what kind of personality they could have given her. Also Elgar, and honestly the villains overall. They get much better in the second half, but during the first half they were the real stars of the show. They were the ones who were actually funny and had stakes while the Power Rangers were just barely there. When things were going bad for the Rangers it was a lot more interesting overall for the bad guys. What didn't work was a lot, but one of the biggest things I would say was Alpha 6. My god. I get they were trying to separate the show to make it like this special cool thing, but this was a terrible move to make Alpha 6 this fake New Yorker douchebag of a robot. I mean he was blatantly rude to the first Turbo team plenty of times and his voice is grating overall. By the end they toned it way the hell down but it was still pretty cringeworthy. The biggest thing they could have done differently is have Zeo end with everyone graduating. They've given up their powers and they're moving on. Maybe the Zero powers are sent back far away in the time and space of wherever the hell they did with the Zero crystals to begin with, so no evil forces can get them. Then we just start the new season with the Rangers needing to build new powers because the Zeo ones are gone, and they help Zordon and Alpha, whoever is there now, find new Rangers to become the Turbo Team. They do it in like the opening three-parter and boom, done. They're off the show, but not without a proper send-off. If they really wanted to do a feature film, just do like a one-off big adventure in the middle. Maybe use it as like an alternative way to introduce the rescue zords, I don't know. Just use TJ and gang from the start instead of trying to make us care that Tanya's on the radio and oh my god there are monkeys on the air now. That's another thing that was a total failure that I've been trying to block out. Bulk and Skull are monkeys for like 20 episodes. That was miserable to watch and attempt to get through. Luckily, they get turned back into humans viewing an enlarging missile later on in the season, and then they're actually interesting because they're looking for work constantly. They should have become friends with Justin's deadbeat dad. Turbo is a mixed bag. There are some really incredible episodes in the season like Clash of the Megazords or Chase into Space. They're also the lowest of the lows, like Bicycle Built for the Blues and the Curveball. Sometimes the show is super boring and you find yourself zoning out, and sometimes you're so into it you don't realize the episode's almost over until you see the to-be-continued stinger. Turbo is not for everyone, and I think it shows itself as a growing pain of the production. The show was trying to age up, but it had no idea on how to do it. It was trying new weird things to try to keep the attention of the target audience, but it was also clinging on to the past way too much while also changing everything at the same time. It's a very weird season overall, and it definitely has its place as a struggle bus in the Power Rangers history. Next time, we begin a season that's been revered by the fandom for a very long time. Power Rangers in space. A new Power Ranger, a new setting all together, and our first time having a Black Ranger again since Mighty Morphin. Seriously, red, blue, yellow, black, and pink is my absolute favorite color lineup, and the fact that we've only gotten it three times in Power Rangers history thus far is a travesty. Until next time, may the power protect you.